This is a 2013 Mini Club Van, and it's probably the rarest car I've ever reviewed, at least based on sales numbers here in the United States. The Bugatti Chiron, they're gonna make like 500 of those. They'll probably sell like 150 of them in the US. But this thing, Mini only sold 50 of these before they canceled it. Yes, that's right. This is one of just 50 of these little mini club vans. And today I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this club van from Crevier Mini, which is a mini dealership here in Southern California in Orange County. And they have all of the latest minis, but they've also been using this as a shop vehicle for the IT department for this dealership group. When I saw this car, I absolutely went nuts. And I said, can I please review it? And they were like, uh, yeah, I guess. And so now here we are. So here's the deal with this thing. Now, most people know the Mini Clubman. That's club man, not club van. The Clubman has been a pretty popular variant of the Mini for like a decade now, fine. So a few years ago, Mini decided they would make a cargo version of it, and they called it the Club Van for all those people who want a Mini driving experience, but also a van. Apparently, that's about 50 people. But it's a bit more complicated than that because the main reason that the club van was canceled so soon is something called the chicken tax, which I'll get into here in a few minutes. For now, let me go over the basics. This is essentially a mini clubman except in van configuration, and it has an automatic transmission, the base engine, which is a four cylinder with about 120 horsepower, and it's otherwise completely unremarkable, except, you know, for the fact that it's one of the rarest cars in existence. So today I'm gonna take you on a tour of the club van, and I'm gonna show you all of the quirks and features of a very quirky car. And I'm going to explain the whole chicken tax thing and why they only sold 50 of these here. Then I'm gonna get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the club van, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of some other ultra rare modern cars. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features by discussing the quirkiest thing about the club van, and that's its vanness. And so we start with these panels on the side. Now, obviously the regular Mini Clubman had windows here, and as near as I can tell, the club van still has those windows. I guess they figured it would have just been easier in production than putting a different piece of sheet metal here to put the windows in and then put a vinyl kind of decal over the windows to match the paint and make it look like a van. Now, unfortunately, the problem with this idea is that obviously the vinyl decal is a different material from the actual body of the car. And so over time, these things have worn at at different rates and you can clearly see if you look at it in the sun that the vinyl decal is now a completely different color from the actual body of the car it no longer looks probably as good as it did seven years ago when this car was new so using those vinyl decals probably seemed like a good idea at the time but unfortunately it is not an idea that has aged very well and by the way if you go over to the passenger side where you have that little door that opens in the clubman's and the club van you can kind of peek through there and see that there there is a window in there and there is just vinyl placed over the window. Okay, so then you're wondering, well, what did they do on the inside of the club van if they just put these vinyl decals over the window on the outside? Obviously, they couldn't just have covered windows inside here because that wouldn't look very professional. So they have plastic panels. They have three different sizes. The one on the driver's side is very large. And then you have two over on the passenger side to account for the door that's in the clubman and club van. So there are these plastic panels on the inside of the windows to make it be a true cargo van. And next up, from this angle, you can clearly see that the Mini Club Van hasn't just undergone cosmetic surgery to look like a van on the outside, it is actually a van on the inside. A normal Mini Clubman has two front seats, of course, but it also has a second row of seats. Well, in the Club Van, they've removed that second row of seats, and so you have an actual cargo area back here where you could load stuff. And when you see this, it becomes clear why they didn't want traditional windows in this area, because if you have cargo 
cargo kind of bumping around back here, it could break a window. So that's why they put the plastic covering over the windows. So if you have stuff back here, it won't shatter a window while you're driving around with all of the massive cargo that you're carrying in your Mini. And since we're in the cargo area, two other items worth noting. One is the cage that separates the cargo area from the passenger compartment, again, so your cargo doesn't kind of fly up and take you out if you stop really suddenly. That cage is actually removable. You can pull that out, but it's nice to have it in a cargo vehicle. There's also this silver thing on the floor, again, to kind of keep cargo in place. That isn't removable, and that's important if you want to carry stuff, and again, it won't roll into the front. Now, the other interesting thing back here in a typical Clubman, Obviously, there are rear seats, so there are rear seat belts. They've removed the seat belts in the club van, but they didn't remove the rear grab handles. So this still has the grab handles that you could use to get in or out of the car from the back seat, even though there is no longer a back seat. And I guess that was deemed too expensive to remove during the production process. Now, next up, one of the most bizarre details of the club van has to be this door. Now, this third door was added on the passenger side of the regular Mini Clubman. The Clubman was a stretched wheelbase compared to the standard two-door Mini, and they added this door to make it easier to access the rear seats. Now, I figured on the club van, this door would make it easier to access the cargo area, but if you open the front door, and then you come in and open this door, what you actually find is you can't get to anything because of that silver cargo divider and the black cargo cage that's currently in place there's no way to actually get any cargo in through this third door and into the club van <laughs> and so the result is that you have the third door that is absolutely unusable in any circumstances because there's no back seats to access and they've blocked you out from accessing the cargo compartment from here very strange but again obviously another thing they couldn't easily easily eliminate in production the existence of a door. So those are the quirks and features of the club van's vanness, but probably the biggest quirk of all is the chicken tax, and it's the real reason that the club van was withdrawn from the U.S. market after such a short time, only 50 units sold. So here's the deal with the chicken tax, and I promise that most of you will find this to be an actually interesting story. All right, so back in the 1950s, European farmers were getting mad because American farmers were exporting their chickens to Europe, and it was driving down the price of chickens in Europe. So to to do something about this, the European governments got together and they put a tariff, a tax, on imported chickens coming from America into Europe. Now this upset the U.S. government, so to retaliate, the U.S. government put a 25% tariff on a few goods that included pickup trucks and cargo vans that were imported into the United States. Now this was to retaliate against Germany, because at the time Volkswagen was trying to sell a pickup version of the Volkswagen bus here in the United States, and with a 25% percent tax, it was no longer economically feasible for Volkswagen to do this. Now, even though chickens and trucks have changed a lot in the last 50 years, the chicken tax is still in place today. So if you were ever wondering why the only pickups that are sold in America are also built in America, it's because of the chicken tax. It doesn't make financial sense to import pickups to the U.S. and pay that tariff. The Volkswagen Amarok is not sold here because it's not built here and it would just be too expensive. Now, interestingly, the van portion of the chicken tax only applies to cargo vans, not passenger vans. So for a while, Ford was building the Transit Connect as a passenger van in Turkey. They were importing it to the United States and they would actually pull out all the seats once it got imported, turn it into a cargo van at the port, and then they didn't have to pay the chicken tax. They did this until the US government told them to stop. Anyway, all of this is the reason for the incredibly short production run of the club van here in the United States. It was being imported. The U.S. government decided to classify it as an imported cargo van. Therefore, it had to pay the 25% tariff because of the chicken tax. And then it didn't make any financial sense for many to continue bringing it here. And so they stopped after 50 of them. But anyway, on to the other quirks and features of the club van that don't have to do with its vanness. I want to start with the rear doors, which are rather interesting in themselves. For one thing, they're hinged on the sides, so they open like this from the middle, which seems like a really cool kind of funky little mini thing until you realize 
that that means there is a giant post running down the entire middle of the car, which dramatically compromises visibility. Have a look at what it looks like in the rear view mirror. You can tell that there's just about four inches in the middle that you will never really be able to see. And of course, this car predates the backup camera requirement, so there isn't one. In fact, visibility in the club van is generally pretty atrocious because you have these tiny little cute mini mirrors and you have this thing running down the back and they never really thought they would make one without side windows. So you can't really see all that much at any given time in one of these, but this post in the middle doesn't help. Now, one of the other interesting things with the rear doors in this car is the fact that you can open one of them from the key fob. There's a little button on the key fob that shows a mini with the hatchback up. Obviously that's from the regular mini. They didn't convert it to a button with doors on it for the club mini or the club van. But when you press that button, a door pops open and back, nice and convenient. Unfortunately, only one of them pops open. You can't automatically open this one. To open this one, you actually have to walk up and manually pull on it, and then it's opened as well, and you can get back here. Now, one of the interesting things with the doors is the way that they work with the taillights. Now, I have mentioned many times in my videos that the US government has a regulation saying that the brake lights and the headlights cannot be on a piece of bodywork that moves. They have to stay fixed in place. And that's a bit of a problem here because the doors sort of include the brake lights. So how do you keep the brake lights in place when the doors swing open? The answer is, you cut a hole in the doors and you just leave the brake lights behind when the doors open. So that's exactly what they did. You open up the doors and you can see there's a little hole for the brake lights. When the door opens, the brake light stays on the car, thereby complying with the regulation, but the doors still get to open in their cool, weird way. And it's the same situation up front. When you go to pop open the hood, you open it up and you can see, again, there's a cutout in the hood on both sides for the headlights, and that allows the headlights to stay fixed in place Place, even when you open up the hood, again, allowing Mini to comply with that regulation that says headlights and taillights have to stay put even when you open tailgates and hoods. And so this is how Mini does that. Now, these rear doors have a few other noteworthy quirks. For example, when they're open, you can see that the doors have built into them little door pockets for small item storage, which is an excellent idea. If there's something you don't want rolling around in your club van's cargo area, you just stick it in the little door pocket and then it'll stay put when you drive along. I also like the fact that the doors have these little wipers on them, one on each door to wipe the rear window when it gets grime or road debris on it. I think that is kind of a cool look. I also like how the wiper washer has been integrated into the rear spoiler. Underneath the spoiler, there are a couple of holes in place where the spoiler was screwed into the car, and then one of those holes is just extra and used for the washer, which makes it kind of stealthy. When you look at the car from above, you won't see it actually in place, but it's there to do its job. And next we move on to the interior of the club van where there are quite a few quirks and features as Mini is a rather quirky brand and it starts when you turn on this car. This one has the service light on and you can see it's not just a normal boring service light like in most cars. Instead it has a Mini on it. It makes it just a little bit more interesting and cool when it's telling you to bring in your Mini for service. Another cool example of kind of hidden mini branding in this car comes in the center control stack with the climate controls. You can see they're arranged in kind of an unusual manner. Well, that is the mini logo, the circle in the middle with the wings on either side. That's a cool quirk. You got to put climate buttons in. Why make them be normal, boring climate buttons when you can kind of arrange them in the shape of a secret mini logo? Speaking of secret things in this car, I want to mention the secret storage compartment. Now you press this little silver button that opens the glove box, but there is more storage than that. If you press this silver panel on the passenger side, it pops open and you can stick stuff in there. I guarantee a lot of mini owners are looking at that and thinking, wait a minute, can my car do that? Yes, it can. Now, speaking of the glove box, you pop it open and you will find in here the original window sticker, which actually says on it, 2013 Mini Cooper Club Van, verifying that this isn't just a regular Clubman with the stuff back there removed. This is factory. Now this window sticker is going to be important years from now when this is sold with Providence, one of 50 at auction. You can see the original price was $29,340 which kind of proves that the chicken tax wasn't the only reason they stopped selling these. I don't know a lot of companies who want a very small mini cargo van 
for 30 grand. It seems like a little much when you can get a Ford Transit Connect with like triple the cargo space for probably five grand less. Now, next up, another cool little hidden quirk is on the ceiling next to the rear view mirror. There are a few buttons for lights up there. You have the dome light, the map lights, but you also have this little brightness looking button. That button actually changes the color of the ambient lights. This is common now in luxury cars, but Mini was an early adopter of this. And as I press the button, you can see inside the door handle area, the ambient lighting color is changing. Obviously, if it were at night, there would be more ambient lights that you could see change color, but that's a little hard to show in the daytime. But either way, that little toggle switch will change your interior lighting color. Kind of cool. Now, next up, moving up from there, in the middle, you have one of the most obvious things in this interior, this giant circle in the center, which is a huge center speedometer. And it's actually more than that. It also displays your current fuel level in kind of a cool and fun and quirky way with these little orange lights in a circle. And it's also your radio. You can use these buttons, the presets, to change the station, the tuner, the volume, change the mode. So they've integrated a lot of cool things into this giant central speedometer binnacle. But if you don't want to look in the middle to see what speed you're going, it's worth noting there is a smaller digital speedometer directly in front of the steering wheel. It also contains the tachometer and a few other kind of helpful little warning lights, the trip odometer and that sort of thing. And the final quirk in this vehicle is the sun visor situation, which is rather odd. Now, up here you have your two typical sun visors like most cars, nothing all that weird. But on the driver's side, you have a third sun visor over to the side. I guess that's to block out sun coming in from the side, which makes sense, except that the front driver sun visor can be unlatched and you can also move that over to the side so you can have two side sun visors in this car, which in itself wouldn't be even that weird, except you can't do that on the passenger side. So there's three sun visors in the front, one on the side, two in the front for this car. It's a very, very odd situation. Haven't really seen repeated in any other cars. And so that's a tour of the mini club van. <laughs> now it's time to get this weird thing out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the club van. And I'm gonna give you a little preview here. This is gonna be like driving an automatic base model mini. <laughs> There's not really all that much to this that's gonna be different, I think. So basically, the first thing you notice when you try to maneuver this car, like I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the blind spots are kind of rough. You have, you know, things over the windows and back, and the mirrors are these nice, cute little mini circles. Not, you know, vans have like big square mirrors with like a blind spot mirror. This doesn't have that. So there's no backup camera in here. It's a little bit difficult to maneuver around compared to a regular mini. <laughs> Just sitting here at the stoplight, it feels like uh, a mini from this era. There's a lot of these. <laughs> it's not really all that special. From this point forward, from the seats forward, it's not really anything unusual or special, but obviously you can see what makes it kind of an interesting vehicle. Now, obviously this car is dulled by its automatic transmission, as so many cars are, and by its base powertrain, 120 horse. Um, it would be cool if there was a manual, and it would be really cool if there was an S. And I don't know if that exists. I, I have no way to know how to check. I don't know if Mini ever made a club van stick shift Cooper S. That would just be the ultimate in rare modern Minis. This car illustrates why you don't want the base automatic transmission Mini, especially from this area. The newer ones are a little bit peppier, but it's just, you gotta work real hard for the power, which is hard to do in an automatic. And, you know, it's just not that much power even when you get up there. So you floor it and it's like, okay, is that all there is? In terms of quality in this interior, everything is put together fairly well. You know, there's, there's some BMW pieces or pieces that kind of feel BMW-ish, some fonts from BMW, that sort of thing. Um, you know, Mini has kind of tried to position itself as a sort of an entry-level luxury brand, sort of the, you know, the small car luxury brand. And, and you can tell that that's all kind of still true. This car is seven years old, but it's held up pretty well. Really, I love the interior in these. I always have. I think it's a really cool look. Uh, you know, there's a lot of quirky little cool things that distinguish this from just, you know, getting a GTI or getting a Golf or, or you know, some other small luxury hatchback like Lexus CT or something of that sort. And, you know, it makes it a little bit more fun, a little bit more quirky, a little bit more interesting to see the mini logo with all these weird toggle switches or the giant thing in the center. And I've always found that to be kind of cool. Ultimately, it's a mini. They were fun seven years ago. They were fun cars. They're still fun today. Uh, the automatic makes things kind of dull. The 
base engine makes things kind of dull, but you get the satisfaction of knowing that you're in a cool, rare van, even though most people think you're just driving a mini with panels on the side. And you also get the satisfaction of the fun, you know, steering experience and handling, which is something minis have always offered. And so if you find one of these on Craigslist on Auto Trader, you should buy it because it's way cooler than a Ford Transit Connect or something like that. You'll have the only one maybe in your whole state. And so that's the Mini Club Van. This is definitely a weird vehicle and it's got a great story. And I've seen more McLaren F1s than I've seen these things. This may not be a Lamborghini or a new luxury car or some other expensive stuff that I usually review, but I love the quirky cars too, and I'm thrilled that I had the chance to spend the day with one of the quirkiest. And now it's time to give the club van a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the club van is fine, nothing special, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration is slow, and it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is sharp, especially for a vehicle like this, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Fun factor is low, given the low horsepower and the automatic, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Cool factor is also low. If you know these cars would be excited to see one, but 99.999% of people will just think it's an aging base model mini, and it gets a 3 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 17 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features, the club van is okay, nothing more, and it gets a 4 out of 10. Same deal with comfort, pretty standard for its class and price point, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Quality is a bit above average, the interior is high quality, and although these minis aren't known for their reliability, the base models are a bit more dependable than the others, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is only a bit above average, these get great fuel economy and then carry a lot of stuff, but there are only two seats and it gets a 6 out of 10. Value is also okay, these are pretty cheap, but they're also not particularly special or standout and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 27 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 44 out of 100. I don't review a lot of cars like the club van, so here it is next to the closest competitors I could think of. It does only okay, but the real fun of the club van is in just knowing how unknown and rare it is, and I think that's really cool. <laughs> It's otherwise completely unremarkable, except, you know, for the fact that it's one of the rarest cars in existence.